What did you say the name of that competitor of yours was? Mr. Franklin. Well, I have to contact Washington first. Then I'll pay this Mr. Franklin a social call. Our old Nick David Harding counter spy case will resume in a moment. You know, it's pretty hard to beat old Mother Nature. Men have been trying for centuries to make new dishes, new mixtures, new things to eat. They've created some very tasty ideas, too. But when all is said and done, there's nothing better than the real, deep, natural flavors that nature creates herself. And you know, that's one important reason that Bitter Honey Candy Bar is such a favorite. Because there's real, natural enjoyment in the sweet, mild honey flavor in Bitter Honey. Bitter Honey is delicious, tender, chewy candy with a mild honey flavor. To make it even more delicious, crunchy almonds are mixed all through it. Divided into six separately wrapped pieces, it's extra convenient, too. So enjoy it any time, morning, noon, or night, at home, at work, at school, or at the show. You're certain to find bitter honey wonderfully pleasing to your taste. That's because it's only natural to like the simple sweetness of bitter honey's famous mild honey flavor, given extra delight with crunchy toasted almonds. Wherever you buy candy next time, ask for a bitter honey candy bar. When you taste one, you'll agree... Now, back to our old Nick David Harding counter spy case. Peters, this is Harding. Oh, hello, Chief. How'd your speech go? Sorry, I couldn't get up to New York to hear it. You didn't miss much. Seems to be a little out of date. What do you mean? I talked about the cost of unorganized vandalism to society. Well, somebody started to organize at least one phase of it. Oh? We're going to smash it before it starts. I catch the first plane up here. I'll meet you at our New York field office after I've talked to a certain Mr. Franklin. Somebody steered you wrong, Mr. Harding. I've got no complaint to make. Well, do you deny that you're paying off to Van Dango? I don't deny or admit anything. I'm satisfied with things the way they are. He and I have a, well, a business arrangement. That's a nice name for the protection racket. No matter what you call it, Mr. Harding, it saves me a lot of trouble. I'm making no complaints. I see. Thanks for your cooperation. Don't mention it. I won't. Good day. So he wouldn't play ball, huh, Chief? No, Peters, he's too worried about his precious property and profits to take a chance on upsetting the apple cart. That's a shame. I've been checking on this Blackie Van Dango. He's a small-time hoodlum and crook. If we had a complaint, we could pick him up in no time. You put a tail on him? Yes, he'll be covered 24 hours a day from now on. Good. But even with a complaint, we'd have a hard time holding him. Yes, unless we can pick up the kids he's working with. Yeah. An awful lot of kids in New York, Chief. I know, but there's got to be some way of finding the ones we want. Well, we could put agents on as many of Carver's lots as we can cover... Well, that's not too good. No, I guess it isn't. I'd have a hundred to one chance of seeing the kids in the dark, and that's when they work. Yeah, that's right, Nick. But what about a camera? In the dark? Yes. Use an infrared flash with infrared film. Well, who'd shoot the pictures? Well, the How... kids themselves. We'd use the radar principle, lay down a microwave field in parallels between the rows of cars. And when they use their knives for slashing, they'll break the field and trip the camera. Well, we couldn't control it, Chief. Any steel metal would break the field and we'd get a picture. We'd get a picture every time a car was parked in the lot. What's the difference? How many pictures we get as long as the one we want's among them? That's true. We'll have our laboratories develop the films daily. The minute we get something, we'll go to work. Pick up the kids and Van Dango. It could work, Chief. It's worth a try. Have our electronic experts set it up. We'll see what comes out. Chief, here's the latest report on Van Dango. Anything new? Well, he's collecting from five other parking lot operators besides Franklin, but there are still a lot of them holding out. I'm glad to hear that. Here's something, though. After every round of collections, he immediately goes to his boarding house, comes out a few minutes later with a large envelope and mails it. That's interesting. We can't be sure, of course, but the odds are it's money he's mailing. So there's somebody behind him. It's logical. Van Dango won't have the brains to dream up an angle like this himself. Well, now, if we could just... Oh, wait a minute. Harding speaking. Matson in the photo lab, Mr. Harding. You get something? Yes, we're printing the film now. We'll send it up in about ten minutes. Oh, don't bother. Peters and I will be down there right away. (laughs) 
Looks like the other two kids are with him, Chief. The boy with the knife is probably the leader. He's really ripping that tire apart. The camera angle shows everything. Have some copies sent over to Carver. We'll see if these ushers can give further identification. We'll try to find them in the meantime. Where do we start looking? Well, it's a good bet that these kids have been in scrapes before. You try the juvenile domestic courts. Right. I'll try the Association for Crime Prevention. The kids may be in their file. I'll be glad to help you if I can, Mr. Harding. Thank you, Miss Gray. Your association has local offices throughout the city, doesn't it? Yes. Well, do you maintain any kind of a picture file on the children who pass through your offices? No, unfortunately, we don't. Oh. Oh, but if there's a child you want to identify, our social workers may be able to help you. They have wonderful memories for faces. Oh, good. Well, it's this photo here. I'll have copies sent to you sooner so that you can get them out. Let me see. Oh, you won't have to. You know the boy? The one with the knife, definitely. He's Joey Austin. We've had a lot of trouble with his father. Drunkard. Oh. The boy's been in our keeping five times. Where does he live? 325 Edgemere Street. It's all the way downtown. (laughs) You'll probably find him playing in the gutter down by the fish market. Stop the car, Peter. See them? Yes. Over there on the other side of the street. Come on, let's go. Right. We got dough now. We can pay for it. Yeah, but if we swipe it, we still got the dough. Suppose we get uh, you're always thinking that. You got chicken in you? Hello, Joey. Huh? Who are you? I want to talk to you. I don't know you. I got nothing to say to you. That's what you think, Joey. You're in a little trouble. What are you, a cop? Counter spy, Joey. Federal police. The feds, gee. Don't try to go anyplace, you kids. You're coming along, too. Well, we didn't do anything. No, mister. We Shut didn't... up. Pretty tough, aren't you, Joey? I got nothing to say. I think you've got a lot to say. About what? Blackie Vandango. Come on, get in the car. Hello? Yes, Blackie. You? I thought we was only supposed to get in touch with each other by mail. Huh? Kids. That's bad. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll meet you. Right. Usual place. First thing I... Okay, okay, forget it. I'll come right away. Who's that? Oh... Why didn't you say so? No. No. Chief, the agent we just had tailing Blackie moved in. Has he picked Blackie up? Too late. Blackie's dead. What? He was tailed with a cameo parking lot. Three bullets in him. I've got a car downstairs if you want to drive out there. No, a dead Blackie can't tell us anything, but his apartment may. That's where we'll head. Come on. Use your key set, Peters. Open the door. Right. Simple enough lock. Let's see. This one should do it. Mm -hmm. Ah, nice little place. Well, let's see what we can find. You take that side of the room, and I'll take this one. All right. Snappy dresses. Had a lot of suits. Check the pockets. Nothing in them, Chief. You get anything? No. Chief. What? He was careless with money. Take a look at this. Four hundred dollars. Just shoved into the desk drawer. Those envelopes. Perhaps he was going to mail it. Let's see. Jackpot. And what is it? Mr. T. Watkins, Box 246, City Hall Post Office. 
Apparently, it was interrupted just before he was going to mail it. Yeah, it looks like it. We'll take this back to the laboratory, Peters. And we'll mail it for Blackie. Anything yet, Peters? No. Still quiet. Well, you'll come out of that post office sometime. I hope so. Chief, look who... Got something? Yes. The man who just came out. Him? Right. Let's go. Bring it with you. Hello, Mr. Franklin. What? Oh, Mr. Harding. How are you? This is a coincidence. You don't really think our meetings are coincidence, do you, Mr. Franklin? Why? What do you mean? That you're under arrest. Is this some kind of a joke? Blackie's murder, wasn't it? Blackie? Yes, the man who made your contacts collecting protection money from owners of parking lots. This is ridiculous. It is? Would you mind letting me see the mail you picked up in the post office? Why, uh, not at all. I'll, I'll get it out. Chief has got a stroller holster. Don't shoot, Peters. Too much traffic. He's ducking in that apartment. Come on, let's go. Want me to call the field office, Chief? We'll need a squad of men to search those apartments. No, we won't. He's still carrying that envelope that we made radioactive. You've got the Geiger counter. Now turn it on. It'll lead us home. Right. All right, let's go in. Turn it up full volume. He's in here. Getting closer. Which hall? Right or left? Try the right first. No. Must be the left, Chief. Chief, that door. Yeah. All right, Franklin. You coming out? Careful, Chief. He's playing for keeps. So am I. Come out, Franklin, or I'll blast that door full of holes. I'm coming, Mr. Harding. Watch it! You played it wrong, Franklin. Master, when Carver told me you had the kids, I... He taunted you and forced your hand, huh? Yes. I should... I'll call the hospital, Chief. Don't bother, Peters. This one's for the morgue. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. 